All right, so I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of how to unfold the bike. It's in the folded position right now, and let's walk through that process. The first thing I'm going to do is unfold the handlebars like that, hit that clamp. The next thing I'm gonna do is unfold the frame. When I do unfold the frame, one thing I wanna watch for is these wires here in the middle. Try not to pinch those. So I'm just gonna kinda of push those in, make sure they're not gonna get smashed. Okay, good. That's pretty much it. Good to go. In fact, I'll see you later. What is happening, awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Reviews, and today we are reviewing the Vituvia Antelope folding fat tire electric bike. A lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's dive into the specs. What is going on awesome peeps? Welcome back to another episode of Electrified Reviews. Today we are reviewing the Antelope Step Through Folding Electric Bike from Vituvia. The Antelope has a style that we are starting to see more of in the industry and it's very reminiscent of the Aventon Cinch Step Through, which we reviewed earlier this year. If we're comparing this bike to others, I think the Cinch is a great rival here, and we'll keep popping back and forth to compare the two to see which e-bike wins out. Vituvia is an e-bike company that has tons of experience in the e-bike space. They're primarily a manufacturer, but they've also made their own foray into the North American e-bike market, bringing their own branded e-bikes. The Antelope Step Through comes in two colors. We've got Moss Green and Bonfire Red, which is the color we are reviewing here today. And this bike has a starting price of $1,899 USD, but at the time of this review, it's actually on sale for hundred bucks off or $1,799 USD, which is not a bad bit of savings. It also comes with a 30 day money back guarantee a two-year warranty, and free shipping to the contiguous United States. Right, but let's dive into the specs. Powering this portable little folder is a 750-watt hub motor in the rear wheel. This motor will bring the Antelope Step Through up to a top speed of 25 miles per hour via the thumb throttle or the cadence sensing pedal assist, which makes this ride a Class 3 e-bike out of the box. In some configurations, it might ship as a class two e-bike and only reach a top speed of 20 miles per hour, but this can also be adjusted in the settings. The Antelope Step Through's motor is powerful enough to ride the bike like a moped using just a throttle and also climb some modest hills, maybe even some moderate hills with some assistance from the rider. When it comes to the batteries, the Antelope Step Through is rocking a 48 volt 14 amp hour locking removable battery that's expertly fitted into the main tube. With 672 watt hours, Vituvia estimates the max range for this battery is around 52 miles when using pedal assist level one. Now, based on similar bikes with similar batteries that we have reviewed in the past, that doesn't seem too far fetched. If you are riding the bike with a mixture of throttle and pedal assist, you're probably gonna get somewhere closer to the 30 to 40 mile range. And using throttle only without pedaling at all will probably get you around 20 miles or so per charge. The Antelope Step Through is a stocky little folder with a curb weight of nearly 70 pounds, but with that higher than average curb weight comes a higher than average payload capacity of 350 pounds. Very nice. This is perfect for those planning on loading the optional rear rack up with extra cargo. 
One of my favorite things about the frame on the Antelope step through is that it has internally routed wires. And look, this is actually a pretty hard feat to achieve with folding e-bikes, which is why most folders have externally routed wires. And this is one of the main reasons that the Antelope looks so clean. The charging port is also located in a nice spot higher up on the frame, making it easier to plug in without having to bend over. The Antelope has some very approachable geometry and will provide a comfortable ride for quite a few riders out there. The standover height is only 16 inches, which makes it easy to get on and off. The reach is right at 20 inches, so no need to stretch too far to reach the handlebars here. And the total length is 65 inches, and the folded dimensions for those who want it are going to be 26 inches by 34 inches by 12 inches, meaning this is going to fit in most trunks or back seats, even on smaller cars. We have attachments for a front basket and a rear rack, which means you could load this bad boy up with quite a few groceries or necessities. You also have the option to mount a bottle cage on the seat tube, which puts it in a pretty good spot to avoid taking away any of that precious standover height. The Antelope has front suspension, which is a nice bonus on a bike like this. The front forks here have about 60 millimeters of travel and have a lockout option as well. The front fork suspension paired with the fat 20 inch by 4 inch tires creates a pretty smooth riding experience. And the Innova tires, which we haven't seen very often on these e-bikes, are actually pretty nice. They're rated at 60 threads per inch, and 60 threads per inch tires are popular for gravel and mountain bike as they strike a nice balance of ride comfort, durability, and tubeless reliability. They're definitely on par with some of the industry standard tires we see, if not even a step above, and even have the added bonus of having sidewall reflective stripes. Very, very groovy. These are great additions when we are considering nighttime safety. The saddle is a typical bike saddle. Nothing too wide, but not too thin either. It's really just right in the middle. And for most people, maybe a wider comfort saddle might be a worthwhile upgrade. But for those of you who want an even cushier ride, we definitely recommend an aftermarket seat post suspension. Those things, man, they just work wonders. To bring the Antelope step through to a stop, we've got Logan hydraulic disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors in the front and rear wheels. And look, these brakes have great stopping power and are an excellent upgrade when compared to mechanical brake options. They've also got motor inhibitors built into the brake levers themselves, so whenever you hit the brakes, the motor instantly shuts off. This is a huge safety feature and it means that you'll never be fighting against that 750 watt motor when you're in an emergency stopping situation. Totes my goats. In the back of the Antelope step through, we've got a seven speed cassette and a Shimano Tourney derailleur. And on the handlebars, we've got the ever popular SIS index thumb shifter. If we've said it once, we said it a thousand times, it's always great to see name brand Shimano parts. They're reliable, easy to replace, and you know, all that jazz. The whole drivetrain setup here is actually pretty sweet. Not a lot to critique. The Antelope comes with an integrated front light, and that's pretty much it. You have the option to add some transport items like a front basket or a rear rack, as we mentioned earlier, but we also don't really have any fenders included, although there are mounting points for fenders, so you could easily install those if desired. The display on the Antelope step through is not necessarily the best screen we've tested this year, but it is decently bright, and it's easy to read in direct sunlight. It shows you the usual information such as speed, battery level, range, and most of the stats that we're used to seeing. The handlebars here are fairly straight with a slight upsweep to them. The stem is adjustable to raise and lower the handlebar position and Vituvia left us plenty of cabling to take advantage of the full range of the stem here. That's great news for those taller riders who want to extend their reach. Overall, the Antelope step through is a decent competitor for the event and cinch and even wins out in a few of the categories such as higher motor power, hydraulic brakes versus the cinch's mechanical brakes, higher payload capacity, and a bit more travel on the suspension. At the time of recording this review, the cinch is about $1,200 cheaper. The Antelope seems to be a decent e-bike in its own right, but 
What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Comment either cinch or antelope, and let's settle this once and for all. But for now, I think it's time to head back out and do a bit more riding on the Vitubia antelope. So let's roll. Alright my fellow e-bike friends, that is it for the review of the Vituvia Antelope. I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day, a wonderful holiday season, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, whatever it is you're celebrating. It's a beautiful time of year and I hope you guys are enjoying it. So thank you for watching and until next time, peace.